Okay, people, welcome back to another figure or fodder. You know, figure or fodder, where I quickly run through some of the figures that I've bought that may or may not be upgrades to the figures I already have in my main displays. Or they add to the groups or the troops in some way. Or in the case of Lizard here, I've had versions of him in the past, but they're not even on the shelves anymore. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna put that away. Basically what it boils down to is, it's an excuse to open more toys. Don't tell anybody. Shh. Like this droids cartoon inspired Boba Fett, this is not gonna replace the Boba Fett on my shelf. Hell, even without this, I can't decide which Boba Fett is in my main display. But I like the colors, I like the different versions, and I like Boba Fett, so. I had to grab it. Seeing this all together, that baby blue, and I'm not even gonna try to name color. There's some brown and some gray. I ain't gonna lie, I had a version of this on the shelf already. This is a custom model kit. This works as kind of a realistic version. This is just, you know, hey, it's cartoony, cool. That's exactly what I was looking for with this figure. This will look nifty as hell next to my Proto Fett or my In Disguise Boba Fett because they share the same body. They have all the same proportions, details. I'm a sucker for Boba Fetts, even when they use this outdated body. What is it by now, 10 years old? So you get some hindered elbows. Double knees though, even back then, they could get some range to them. Not a lot of torso. And then this. These pouches hanging down are just too stiff. And then they run into the pouches on the leg. There's <laughs> it's crazy how stiff this is. Has a jetpack in matching colors, and then the same old weapons in just plain gray. <laughs> kind of cartoony. For what this is, and <laughs> what it's gonna do, I'm okay with this. Next up, the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Credit Collection Tusken Raider from The Mandalorian. I think we first saw this back at San Diego, and my first thought was, ooh, a Tusken to go with the other Tuskens that stands out from the other Tuskens. Okay, I think the regular Tuskens were packed like that too with the robe all stuffed up inside the traffic cone robe. Well, I say traffic cone, it's split, so you can get some movement to it, but if you do this, you're gonna have a porch cover. Plus, they're not gonna be sitting or anything if, well, I don't know, if you force it down, you can put it on a speeder, so it'll go bantha. You're gonna get a lot of these. I've wiped this off several times. I mean, if you have a couple of these and a couple of these in your Tatooine display, it looks like individuals. Well, you'd have two matching and two matching, but it breaks it up a bit. And I really like that they dirtied the hell out of this one. It's just a little brighter. It doesn't stand out as much as you would think. It looks like you could run into this Tuscan in the desert. Except for, there's some extra paint on the head to really sell that credit collection look. And on this side, I could kind of get away with it. You know, it's sweat or some kind of stain, some wear, some tear, but you get around to here and it's, just blatantly brighter. It's the light coming from here and shadow over here. It's the same here on the bandolier, but it's not near as noticeable because you have to throw down over it if you want. I guess that could be an easy fix. Overall, I like my, damn it, my egg omelet Tuscan Raider. And just like the original, I like the soft goods here. It's a rough material. But if I were to take it off, oh, got that same bright color on this side. Don't tell me this is, oh, it is. Even under the robes, they did that shadow effect. Then it comes down to brown forearms to match the belt. What about on the legs? No, that's just plastic. The original had paint here to make it look like pants and then boots. On this one, they didn't put that extra paint here, but they did it here. Interesting. The extra paint here meant no paint on the weapons, I guess. Again, comparing to the original, it's much, much plainer. We do get the full array of gaffy options. You can plug anyone in and then you have an individual gaffy for individual Tuscans. That differentiates them even more figure to figure. Got some stiff ass hands though. There we go. Hmm. <laughs> for a retro carded lizard, like I said, I don't have a lizard on the shelf at the moment. I skipped this because I have the build a figure pieces for lizard that I've never put together. The more people talked this up, and the more I looked at this, I thought, you know what? I'd rather have a classic lizard. And this just happened to, oh, <laughs> you Marvel team locking me out of my figures. Fate was just letting me know that I needed to grab this because I was at Walmart one day and this was on the shelf. And I can't say no to fate, right? Plug the tail on. Oh, it is bendy. I cannot believe that I was about to pass on this figure. Oh, I know that bugs some people here. Let's even it out. There you go. I say classic, that's mostly in design, articulation, and figure wise. There's a hinge at the waist and then a dumbbell up above that. So he can go all kinds of crunchy. Then there's the ball at the bottom of the neck with the hinge and a ball on top. And I completely understand if this super classic head is not your jam. I, I, in fact, I, I like it, 
but I think I'm liking the second head better. <laughs> What's this pose I got? Yes, come in. Pinless double knees coming all the way up. Some swivel at the calf hidden by the pants. I would have liked to seen some toe here. Like I said, the tail does bend, but if you want to turn it around like this, you can get some swiping action too. That very raptor-like. <laughs> Got some bagginess, a generic shirt look underneath. I wonder if they could use this base body from, well, the collar all the way down to the knee. I wonder if they could make civilians out of that. You can arc the back a little bit and have them standing more up, but I think I like a little hunch to it. I keep trying to get them all in camera and the tail's working against me. Pushing on the desk. I don't know why I thought he was going to be kind of small. He's taller than the retro carded Spider-Man, which puts him even taller than something like Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. And I like that. <laughs> Again, I can't believe I was like, oh, no, I don't need this. Because I did need it. I just didn't know it. Like I said, there's a classic option to the head. I'll probably stick with this one, but options are good. And there's a fist right, grip left, and then some science type things for that gripping hand. But I like these spread out hands. They're, well, that's menacing, and that could be him down crouching or climbing walls, whatever. I did not expect to be this overjoyed with this figure, this happy with it, but damn, it surprised me. I also originally passed on the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Tika from Obi-Wan Kenobi because they, that price was too high for a Jawa. But I was wandering through Target one day and it was on clearance. So I thought, you know what? <laughs> that, that price I'm happier with. The base body is the same Jawa we've been getting for years. Right down to the lack of a cut in the lower robe at all. So we're dealing with a traffic cone here. On the original, I cut up the side to free up the leg movement, but only one side. Why didn't I cut this other side? I guess because on the shelf, that's where the Jawa is, just like this most of the time. Their big difference is, of course, this vest overlay. In the original, it was a couple bandoliers going to the back with a holster. Here, got the strap coming across, and that is actually part of the vest. I do like that they painted the silver right here. Oh, and the buttons on the pouches. That's some of my favorite things because it's just a little extra effort. Then you get to the back and it's pretty plain, but they did it up here. And then those gold eyes peering out from under the hood. Light brown legs up above the knee, lighter wraps for below the knee. Colors really stand out next to the off-world Jawa, who has all the leg movement because of the cloth robe. I wish. <laughs> that would be a thing for all the Jawas. They did it with the retro carded Jawa, the vintage inspired one, but I never liked the contrast between the, the bright inner robes and the dark outer robes. Plus they gave this one the lower plastic robes under the cloth, but as is, that it's Tika for the shelf. They did shade down in the grooves. That's cool. Then it comes with this bundle of hose all wrapped up inside of a container of some kind. There's this. I, I want to say this was part of the show, but it's been so long since I've seen those episodes. And then you get the traditional Jawa blaster. Oh, I forgot how much movement you actually get to the cut in the waist. Then there's the updated Dr. Afra in the publishing program. It's the same packaging as we've seen until you open this flap and what? I don't really have strong feelings either way about the lack of a window. I order most of my stuff online. I don't see it until I open the shipping box. But to keep the whole concept of a cover opened up to another cover, to just a picture, <coughs> on top of that, they removed the Velcro that used to hold it shut. Now it's just a tab that just plugs in. Whatever. It's holding my toy. That's all I care about. This is a good re-release for a couple of reasons. One, that original Dr. Afra was hard to get even when it was new. That case seemed to just hit really quick and then disappear. But instead of reissuing this the exact same way, they changed it up. They put this trench coat on here, along with this scarf. Otherwise, it's the same body, just in different colors. If you miss the first Afra, there's another chance at her. But if you did get the first Afra, there's a reason to get this because it looks different. And it's kind of an upgrade, especially on the photo reel. Look how less shiny the new one is. It's less shiny than a lot of current figures. And that's my biggest gripe anymore about the faces is that they look sweaty or wet. But then there is less paint to other places. You can see on the original Afra, there is all kinds of dry brush up on top. Same with the shirt. Then the new sleeves with all those wrinkles and folds, that did get a wash along with paint on these silver cartridges. As the original Afra was bare armed and it had the tattoo. Got kind of a copperish tint to the goggles instead of silver. And <laughs> I say there was no paint up here. I mean, they did paint the straps to make it look different from the little hat thing. So that's cool. I guess I could have done this in the first place to give you a better look. And then you can also remove this if you want. That does kind of get in the way because when you have this on, you go to move stuff around that's constantly pushing up. The trench coat look is cool, 
but kind of a shame because that base body is fantastic. It has that hinge at the abs and then a floating upper torso. All kinds of crunch. Plenty of movement in the legs. You got your double knees come all the way back. And even the hinge and swivel elbow, it has enough cut coming down and then sculpt it to go inside right there to get you past 90. The original was bare armed with hinge and swivel and eh, eh, about 90. So I like this overall adventure look, but it's not as free as this one in the pose department. I guess I could swap heads if I wanted this as my main display with the better face, then have this one as backup running with black chrysanthemum or something. Comes with her blaster, can go down here in the holster. I took this off a minute ago, I didn't look at it. Eh, that's not bad. There is something to be said about this bundled up look though. It adds a little something extra to it. <laughs> there's a lot of decisions to be made with Dr. Afra. Then there's this Daredevil 3 pack and really I'm not quite sure why I haven't opened this yet. Here it is right here. This is exactly one of the main reasons I wanted this set. Look at that crazy beautiful thing. And always be sure to double check these damn tissue bags because you're liable to miss stuff. I'm a big bullseye guy, and even then, when I saw this package, I was like, what in the hell is this? Why is this blue? That just... <laughs> then people started talking about it and looking around, and it does kind of give that old school sports jersey vibe, I guess. But I don't think it replaces my original bullseye figure, which uses this exact same body from head to toe. It's even the same head sculpts with a nice dash of photo reel, but... <laughs> This is going to sound crazy, but I like this one better. The eyes look better here, but for some reason, those white shiny teeth and the lips and the chin, why does the chin become more prominent with a shine to it? This one just seems like he's smiling. This one, ah, there's a sinisterness. I wish I could take these eyes and put it on this face. Just the eyes. My second thought was, oh, I could swap heads, but... The colors are different. The new Bullseye's costume is black. The old one is dark, dark, dark blue. It looks good with that extra stripe. I hate that it goes onto the butterfly. Well, there, it's not so bad. You can connect. Here, it's not painted right. In the package, he has a grip left and a fist right, along with an alternate fist left and a grip right. My favorite, the finger gun left hand. Then there's another left hand with a cool clear effect piece with daggers flying out. There's this dagger that slides right into the sheath on the back of the belt. Here's the thing that I'm sure everybody's talked about. There's a holster, there's no gun. I don't think of Bullseye as a gun guy, so I don't mind the exclusion. I just wish this was altered some way to take the holster off. Saying all that, when I pulled my old one off the shelf, I didn't even put the gun in the holster, and I have no idea where it went. I have him with the finger gun, and then I put a card in his trigger finger hand. But even if I don't personally use it, the holster's there. It should have come with a gun. For me, Electro was more of a draw than Bullseye. Just the upgrades here, the double elbows. For some people, the pinless knees are upgrades. I could go either way, but I will say, it being clean on this bright white plane of paint, eh, that looks pretty good. And then again, the faces. Here's the old school Marvel, <laughs> it's weird to say old school Marvel Legends, but here is how they used to do the face paints. Here's how they now do the face paints. That and the hair is so much more dynamic. I do not like how the bandana lays on top of the head. That's way high. Heat that up, peel that off, see if I can get that to sit lower. I want it right across the top of the eyebrows. Or at least closer to this. This looks like she's wearing something on top of her head with some hair under it. This looks like she's hiding something up there, like an extra weapon. Like I mentioned when I opened it, my big draw was this head. And that is just some unrealistic comic book goodness. This didn't even have to be back here, but I like that they did it. I mean, it's crazy. As far as the costume goes, I prefer red. That's just how I picture Electra. But on this figure, with all this dark mass of hair on top, I kind of like the white. I still want to see this body with the upgrades in red for another Electra. But as is, that does add a lot of weight on top though. That's, well, okay. If you're gonna do some posing, that may cause... She has that weapon holding hand with the two fingers clawed out and then a grip hand on the left. Got a fist right, fist left, one of those katana swords, and then a couple of sigh. I'm gonna have to put some heat to this one, straighten it out. Then there is Mr. Matt Murdock, the daredevil. I'm liking they put him on this agile body. Hell, the crunch at the waist alone gets you this much. And then you have the floating upper, even more. Some arc back and some tilt to the side and twist up there. Now I know some people prefer the other way, but here, you can go, 
and you can twist there and then look up. It feels more natural. Butterflies go forward and back, hips going all around with some double knee up to there. Oh, toe joints. I don't want toe joints on everybody. I just want toe joints on crouching type characters. I picture Daredevil, you know, up on rooftops, surveying the city. One of the big complaints when this was revealed was the lack of contrast between the logo and the costume. And I can agree with that. It's more noticeable than I thought it would be, especially when I get it out of my broad ass lights. But if I had my way, I'd go darker with the costume. Leave that as it is. I'm also a fan of the gloves and the boots being that same shade as the logo. Like the original, it stands out. It reminds me of the comics. Same thing for the belts and the straps. They did kind of do it to the eyes, but it's hard to notice, again, because those reds are so close to each other. I do like that it's taller and lither, though. It still looks muscular, but acrobatic muscular. And in that sense, I have been seeing a lot of people replace the shoulders to bulk them up a bit, and... I may have to do that. One last nitpick, something we've been seeing with Hasbro. There's a different color to the knees than the rest of the body. I guess the elbows would be too. That is the red I'd like to see the rest of the body in. Again, not a huge difference. It's very hard to see, but I feel like that shade of red would pop the logo a bit more. Got your fist right and your grip left, along with an alternate grip right and fist left. Got the clubs for directing air traffic. I usually holster those up because that just looks good. But I may not do that this time because the set came with these. Plug the clubs onto the end of it. Get more of that comic flair into your posing. Damn, I need a rooftop diorama. Now that I'm posing them with the sticks, these needed up and down hinges. <laughs> There's another grop for you. So at the end of the day, not a bad stack of figures to open up at all. I'm definitely adding the omelet Tuscan to the group. I may have to do some paint tweaks to the sides of the head, but other than that, it's going right in. Hell, I may not even do the tweaks. And for now, the same goes for Tika. I don't have a dedicated Obi-Wan display. So until I do, that's going to go with the rest of the Jawas. Boba Fett's not fodder, but like I said, he's not going to be the main shelf Boba Fett either. I think Bullseye's going in a bin. I just like this one too much. This is my Bullseye. Electra? Do I have to say anything about this? This is gonna be my main shelf Electra. I'm definitely gonna to try to fix this though and try to swap back and forth because I like this look too. Oh, but that hair, look at that fantastic mess. I think this Daredevil's going front and center too. I've been running with this one for so long that it feels weird to replace it. And while I like the colors used, that's just a better daredevil all the way around. I haven't made a decision with Afra yet. I already talked about it. I could make a head swap. And I do like the jacket, but I really like this look. They're both good. I don't like both of them. Finally, for Lizard, if it's not obvious, <laughs> this one's going right onto the Spider-Man shelf. Why didn't anybody tell me how good that figure is? No, a lot of people told me, oh, you're dumb for passing that up. And I thought, eh. but now that I have it open, all y'all were completely right. I am dumb. No, Lizard is good. That's what I mean. Either way though, I got to open some toys, play with some plastic. Ain't nothing better. If you enjoyed this figure of fodder, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, whatever toys you may be opening, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Oh no, I have two Dr. Afras. Which one am I going to put on the shelf? Hey, Robo, dumbass, why don't you just swap them out every now and then? That sounds like fun. That's a good solution. I overcomplicate things sometimes.